Hello, hello, hello. Today we're doing a kale wash. Now, uh, kale wash is quite a, a good neutral uh, spirit that people can do, but the problem is a lot of them people don't like to do it because it takes a bit more time than a tomato paste wash or a lentil wash. Um, but uh, I really like it. Now, the ingredients you need are 100 grams of curly kale. Now, depending on where you buy it from, um, it depends on what quantity you get. I can only get in 200 grams bags. So the good news is that you can prepare it all and then freeze it. So what I'll be doing is I'll do a, a 200 kales uh, and prepare it, and I will split half it off, put it into a drinks bottle, and I'll stick it in the freezer. And then in a few weeks, few months, whatever I want, when I'm ready to do another kale wash, I can take this out, let it defrost for two, three hours, and just drop it inside my boiler. And uh, or my uh, brewing vessel, and it worked really well. So, 200 grams of kale, five kilograms of granulated sugar, 70 grams of baker's yeast, um, and if you want to help a little bit, two multivitamin tablets as well. Uh, if you, depending on your hardness and your pH of your water, you might want to do uh, Epsom salts uh, or um, and or citric acid. Um, but you all know your water if you need that or not. Now, uh, the other way, uh, there are two ways you can do a kale. Uh, you use the kale for nutrients for the yeast to help uh, make it nice and strong. It is split between how you prepare the kale. The thing that everyone agrees on is that you put it in a pan with water and you let it boil. Then the way it splits is it seems that the majority of people will then take that kale, stick it into a blender or liquidizer, turn it into like a green soup and then pour that in while other people, and this is what I've been doing, say you don't need that to do that. You can literally just boil your kale for a while and then squeeze out the juices. So, so quite often what I will then do is I will then use ah, two spoons and I'll scoop out some of the kale and I'll squish it with my uh, spoons to push out all the juices um, that have come out of it. Uh, you can do it for a strainer or a sieve, but I don't think you'll get as much out without really pushing it down. Now I've done five, maybe six washes of using it like that, just extracting the juice, and they've always come out really good results. But today I'm going to blend it, uh, and it'll be my first time of trying. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. All right, let's uh, get cooking. So what the first thing I've done is I've added 21 litres of water, filtered water, into my uh, boiler. I set it to 27 degrees Celsius, so it keeps it nice and warm. The intention is that Sugar melts quicker when it's in warm water. So let's put in the five kilograms of sugar in there and then give it a stir. All right, now the actual amount of water you use doesn't really matter. Uh, on average, I'll use a liter of water. We'll see how it goes. So, so what I'm gonna do now, even though I've got 200 grams in here, and turn on that. So I might add a little bit more, but you will get something evaporating out and then stick on your lid and then uh, we'll leave it for a while. I would say once it's come to the boil, obviously do keep stirring it with your spoon and you just need to move it around and make sure that everything is uh, being agitated so it doesn't burn onto the bottom. Um, I would say let it boil for maybe 10 minutes. Um, just make sure that everything's nice and squashed uh, and squishy. Um, because that's realistically what we're doing with this boiling process. All right, it's actually been 20 minutes now since uh, I boiled this. Um, it's really good consistency. I've added a tiny bit more water as well, uh, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm happy the way that is. It's cooled enough. So I'm hoping I'm not going to get this absolutely everywhere. But there's a fair chance. Yep, that's already pouring over. Joy, okay. A bit all in there now. So let's blend. Oh, turn it on. So what we're going to do now is separate into two separate containers, one for now and one for next time. All right, that's 600 mil in each. 
So this one is the one that's going to go into the freezer. So this one now can get poured straight into the boiler. Very dark mixture. There we go. Now the last thing we need to do is the multivitamin tablets. Now the easiest way to do those is with a mess on porter, portal. <clears throat> and then it's a simple let's crush them up. There we go. Nice and simple. Right, now the last thing we need to do is a hydrometer reading. You're ideally wanting to be, or well, definitely no higher than 1.080. Um, what between 1.070 and 80 is more than adequate. Now also remember that obviously these are calibrated at 20 degrees, so this is currently at 27 degrees. Uh, so I'll need to do a bit of conversion to make sure what it really is, because what it says it is will not be uh, 1.077. Uh, so I'll calibrate that, see what it is, and I might need to put a little bit more sugar in. We'll see. So we're in the shed. So my the uh, wash, which is uh, looking interesting, is in here. We've got just fractionally under 25 litres. Uh, I've got a heat belt on here to keep it warm. Uh, I've set, I'm using my uh, digital controller here, which isn't switched on yet, so I switch it on. And that is set to 25 degrees Celsius lowest and 26 degrees highest. And it's going to count the bubbles as well, and that will maintain a nice temperature. So the last thing to do is add in my Allison's. Uh, dried active yeast and that's 70 grams. Now some people will just leave it in there on the surface like that. I like to give a little bit of a stir just to make sure that it's reasonably hydrated. That's all I will do. So now since I'm doing this one-handed I'm not going to put the lid on right this second but I'll actually push it down properly in a moment. Right, I will now effectively close this up and I'm going to leave it here for a while and uh, see what happens. We are on day 21 and the wash has finished. So I've already taken a hydrometer reading and it's 0 0.990, which is perfect. And I've calibrated it down to 20 degrees because this is currently at 27 degrees. And the amazing thing is, look at that, how clear, well, it's not clear, but how good. There's no, like, crud and scum layer all around here. It's just tiny, tiny bits, and that will clean off really easily. So this curl wash has come out nicely. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to put it into that tub bucket there. I'm going to then degas it. And then once it's been degassed, I will then transfer it over to here and uh, this 23 litre glass carboy. And then I'm going to add bentonite to uh, basically clear it. Right, it's been four days now. It's been given uh, two, two 20 gram doses of bentonite powder and racking off bet between them. Uh, as you can see, it's very nice and clear. Very happy with that. Uh, very happy indeed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've done a kel wash yourself or you have any questions about it, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to see how many people actually do it and whether you extract the juice or whether you blend it all together. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. It will help me out a great deal. And uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.